Hello guys, good morning. This is diary of a coach. And this is episode 332. 332. It's a beautiful morning. I had a long sleep. Woke up very early. I had to run down. So, it's so good to be back to base fully. How are you this morning? I'm loving the moments. Today is episode 332. Gradually, we're inching to one whole year's worth of diary of a coach. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. Yeah, so... I have some special birthdays to celebrate today. Today is the birthday of our one and only nurse in Sopka. Our one and only nurse. She's, the, she's a mental health first aider. She's our premarital counseling medical facilitator. And she's our nurse working almost 247 every single time. Happy birthday, Moriah Ebo. I celebrate you, ma'am. I thank you for your commitment to our brand. I thank you for your commitment to our work. Thank you immensely for all that you do for Sopka. Thank you so, so much. Today is the birthday of Henry Spies. Henry Spies, one of our most diligent diary members and community members. Thank you, Idengi, for pointing that out. Happy birthday. Day Henry Spy, so good to celebrate you. And my one and only DG of Nitda, Al Haji Kashif Inua, is live with us this morning. Good morning, my DG. Good to see you live with us this morning on Diary of a Coach. You're making us proud, my brother. And thank you for all that you do representing the Balewites. And doing your best for Nigeria. I'm so proud of you, my DG. May God help you with your assignment at NITDA and see you at the top. I'm sure after your tenure at NITDA, hopefully we will see you become a federal minister. You know, up, up, up there. We look forward to seeing and celebrating you on many more milestones. So thank you for joining Diary of a Coach this morning. Fantastic. Today's diary is titled, Teach Yourself How to Forgive. Teach Yourself How to Forgive. Teach Yourself How to Forgive. When I woke up this morning, the first thought that came to my head was, someone somewhere needs to learn how to forgive. No, it's not his birthday. I'm just celebrating that he joined us online. <laughs> Thank you so much. I woke up this morning having a belief, a conviction that someone online needs to learn how to forgive. They need to learn how to forgive. So this morning we're talking about forgiveness. One of the modules of anger management that we teach in Sopka is forgiveness. You know, and one of the things we'll learn about forgiveness is that forgiveness is a decision. It's not a hope. To forgive someone is a decision. It's not something you hope to do. Forgiveness is not something you say, I hope that one day I will be able to forget all these things that has happened. I hope that one day I will think about it. And I will not feel anger towards you again. I'm hoping that I can forgive you. Forgiveness does not work like that. Forgiveness is not something you hope to do. Forgiveness is something you decide to do. Forgiveness is a response that you choose in life. Yesterday on episode 331, we talked about choosing a new set of emotions. By the way, this is still our week of doing new things. The week of trying new things. The week of trying new behaviors and new episodes. So today we're trying forgiveness. 
Forgiveness is a decision. Forgiveness is something you choose to do. Forgiveness is something you decide to do. Forgiveness is something you you embrace intentionally, deliberately. Now, there are some things that govern forgiveness. In life, where we were growing up, they used to say, forgive and forget. Forgive and forget. But guess what? That statement is a myth. It is an it is an incorrect statement. It is a dysfunctional statement because by design, the mind is programmed to remember everything until the day you die. I've met some religious people that say, I will pray and God will make me forget. I will do this and God will make me forget. Well, let me, let me, let me remind you. God is a God of order. God is a structural God. God is an organized God. God has designed the body to remember everything. So God will not go against his design and principles to make you forget what you should remember. God has put it in us to remember events because he wants us to learn from them. So you don't forgive and forget. Actually, you learn to forgive even though you remember. That's the word. You don't forgive and forget. You actually remember. You forgive so that you can remember and feel well. That's how it is. So God will allow you to remember things so that you can forgive even though you remember. That is the design. That is how it works. Now, so what does it mean to forgive? To forgive, like I said, is a response. You are forgiving because something has happened before to you which you want to respond by letting go of. You want to respond by expressing how you feel, communicating the pain, expressing your decision to forgive, irrespective of the person's choice to make peace with you or not. But you will always remember it. So forgiving does not require the response of the offender. That's another angle about forgiveness. Forgiving does not require the response of the offender. What it means is that you don't forgive because somebody is ready to apologize. You don't forgive until someone is ready to make peace. You don't forgive because somebody is agreeing with you that they offended you. That is not the basis for forgiveness. Forgiveness is not hinged on the readiness of the offender. Forgiveness is rather hinged on your readiness to let go, irrespective of the response of the offender. Your readiness to let go, irrespective of the response of the offender. That is forgiveness. Forgiveness also is a function of being ready yourself to let go. Forgiveness is a, res- is a response of you being ready it is the point where you are also ready to let go. What this means is that sometimes you are really not ready to forgive. You are so hurt. You are so pained. You are so, you are so offended that you are not ready to let go. And so you need to learn to prepare yourself. Like part of forgiveness is being prepped, building capacity to forgive. That's also another part of forgiveness. You must build yourself to forgive. You must prepare yourself to forgive. You must build capacity to forgive. Because sometimes we are not ready to forgive. I remember a particular lady who hurt me. I see, when I remember what transpired, I asked myself, is this girl going to go to heaven? Well, guess what? Every time I feel that way, I interrupt myself and say, no, this lady, you will forgive her. You will forgive her. Every time I think about, okay, you also have hurt other people. You also have been unreasonable in some cases. You did. I have to keep telling myself, you know, you have to keep preparing yourself to forgive every single time. Because some people have done some things to you that you tell yourself, this person does not deserve my forgiveness. Legitimately so. Sometimes you think of something some people have done to you and to your life and to your family. And you tell yourself, you know what, this person should burn in hell. But hey, you also prepare yourself to forgive. I remember a particular attacker on, on Twitter. 
I don't know the identity of the person. I don't know who the person is. The person says, I said, I will destroy you. I will destroy your children. Your children will suffer. You will never. I was wondering, who is this person? And what is that? And I asked, I said, why are you saying these things? And the person said, I'm revenging on behalf of somebody. And I said, okay, who is this somebody? And the fellow said, jump question. I will not answer you. So when I remember that conversation on Twitter, I also feel like whoever this person is, because I don't know you, you know that anger like if I just knew who this person is. But hey, over time, in fact, today I remember that incident. I'm like, wow. I laugh at myself around the fear I had from those statements, around the pain, about the, the anger I was feeling. I was just laugh like, why, why was I even that angry? Because I have been able to process that incident and moved on. So you must build capacity to forgive. Forgiveness sometimes does not come to you easily. Forgiveness sometimes does not come to you like a, like a piece of easy meat. It doesn't come on a platter of gold. It is you that has to now build your capacity, build yourself to be able to forgive. How do you build yourself to be able to forgive? Listen to words that encourage you to forgive. Read content that encourage you to forgive. Be around people that show how to forgive. Be re- as in, assimilate resources that give you the proof that you can forgive. Because the more you see evidence that forgiveness is possible, the more likely you are ready to forgive. Don't stay with people who are vindictive. Don't stay with malicious people. Don't befriend people that are difficult. Don't stay around people that can that can give keep grudges for years and they feel good about it. You will learn bad habits. Don't join the bad gang. Open your mind to forgiveness. Open yourself to forgiveness. Intentionally choose forgiveness. Even though you may never forget, choose to forgive at your pace. That's another thing. Forgiveness happens when you are ready at your pace. Don't let anybody cajole you. Don't let Coach Sam say forgive. Then you now say, okay, because Coach Sam has said it, so today I forgive. No. Be sure you are ready and at your pace. Forgive in your own way. Don't let your pastor say, you know, because you are the son of God, you need to forgive him, brother. You need to forgive him, sister. So tell him you forgive him. No. Don't let anybody cajole you to forgive until you are ready to forgive. But guess what? Because you are willing to exploit, go around reading and opening your mind to resources that encourage you to forgive, then you realize that you forgive faster. You become more ready on time. It's a very good thing to do. Forgiveness is for you. I'm sure you've heard that before. Because guess what? I was speaking with someone. I think it was in Enugu. Yes, I think it was in Enugu. I was speaking with someone. Was it in Enugu? And the person was saying that one day... No, no, no. It wasn't in Enugu. It was last week. It was last week. The, late, the fellow was saying that, you know, something had transpired. It was between a pastor and, and, and that fellow. And that the person, you know, they lost contact after a long time. When they lost contact after a long time, then they now reconnected. You know, that he found, he went for an event and then the pastor was there. And the pastor was ah, how far now? It's been a long time. How far with you? That the pastor did not even feel, you know, you know this kind of no iota of feeling that anything even went wrong. The guy said he was flabbergasted. Like, what? All these years I've been carrying this anger against this man. But here he is. He does not even feel as in the man not do like say even anything even went wrong. Sir. The man did not express any emotion like anything ever went wrong. Well, it could have been pretense, I don't know. But the guy said that moment, he told himself, guy, forget this thing. This guy does not even know you are here. Imagine they've lost contact for years old. And all this while, he has been carrying this grudge. Only to realize that the man does not even feel it. I told him, I said, well, the guy may just have built a new coping mechanism that he moves on and you're here killing yourself. So, 
we must build capacity to forgive because the people that we think have offended us may have even moved on. Like, they may not even know they offended you. That's the truth. Some may know they offended you and may have defined it like, do you know, in some cases, an offender actually thinks you offended them. Yes. In some cases, the person that offended you, the definition they give that incident is that you are the one that offended them. So while you are waiting for apology, they are actually waiting for you to apologize. And then you meet with them and they are wondering, is this person not going to apologize? Meanwhile, you are also wondering, is this person not going to apologize? Why would you put yourself through this kind of trauma? So please, this morning on Diary of a Coach, episode 332, I beg of you, build capacity to forgive. Build capacity to forgive. Build capacity to forgive. He then he says, excuse me, Bishop T.D. Jakes said, you forgive but you don't forget. You remember with a conscience void of offense or revenge. This is the proper state of forgiveness. I agree with you. Real Bright Lee Mwabani says, I love this. This was just what I told some one of my followers and volunteers. In Brightly Defense System, one of the first difficult things we teach rape and abuse survivors is forgiveness. Hmm. Forgiveness doesn't require the response of the offender. I agree with you. I pray that your, your candidates understand the power behind forgiveness. It's not easy to forgive someone that raped you. But if you can build capacity to forgive someone that raped you, there is nothing you cannot surmount in this life. Dr. Faith Obafemi says, Thank you, Mr. Idenyi. Forgive but forget not. Forgiving, forgetting might be detrimental and make you suffer the same cruelty and pain again. Interesting. Yusuf Abba says, I don't know who taught me how to forgive, but I find it very easy to forgive. Beautiful, beautiful. Ogbebo Odiase Evelyn says, it's hard sometimes, but it's something we should do to help our inner mind. Yes, help your mental health by building capacity to forgive. Nanshin says, build capacity to forgive. Hmm. Yes, my sister, build capacity to forgive. Jumoke, the health place says, I think the worst case is when you don't even know you have offended someone. I tell you, it's a very difficult place to be. Last night, I was having a chat with a friend. Apparently, last week, we had, I was teasing her, and I said something that was probably of... I didn't know. I just said something. You know, she was complaining about a particular thing, and at a point, I said, you must be enjoying it. I didn't... I, and we just and we moved on. But guess what? Yesterday, she said, that thing you said last week, I was hurt. I was like, eh? I did not know. So I had to apologize. I was like, no, see... This was what I was, I thought we were just gisting, no. I didn't know that line was out of place. And I'm sorry, you know, I'm sorry about that. And she said, no. That she, I, so I asked her, I said, in your depth of heart, did you actually think I intended to hurt you by that statement? She said, no. I said, because honestly, I didn't. I was, you know, you were talking, talking, complaining about it, but and I was just, just to break the tension, I was just like, you must be enjoying it. I, I completely was insensitive and I'm sorry about that. So sometimes we don't even know that what we say, what we do, what we share, how we behave, we don't even know we're hurting someone. We don't know we're offending someone. So let's, let's, let's be open-minded to be sure. Ofani Mebasi says, what if people keep hurting you simply because you keep forgiving? Okay, so... Forgiving does not mean that you are a dollard. Forgiving does not mean that you are a footmat. Part of forgiving, if you heard what I said earlier, I said part of forgiving is that you are able to express how you feel. You are able to communicate what you feel. You are able to say exactly what you are going through by the person's behavior. But you are not going to hold it in your mind without letting it go. So when someone has hurt you, one way, okay, so let's talk about the process of forgiveness. Let me use the opportunity to talk about the process of forgiveness. The process of forgiveness is, one, explaining how you feel. You need to check, I'm not happy about this thing. 
I'm not glad about this thing. So what do I want to do about this? So you need to express how you feel. And you need to communicate it to the person that you feel has offended you. Now the challenge is sometimes some of us want to verbalize our offense. But the person you've offended or the person who has offended you is not available to speak or hear you speak. So sometimes you don't insist that I must talk to the person, which was one of the problems I faced one time. The person kept saying, I want to see you. I want to see you. I could not be seen. I was, I was really, really unavailable. But it now looked like I was dodging. I said, no. You can write what you want to say. You can send a voice note. You can send an email. You can place a call. We don't have to see physically. So sometimes you must choose a flexible medium to express how you feel. If talking to the person is hard, because some of you may not be able to speak in a civil way. You may not be able to have a civil conversation when you see the person physically. So write a letter, share a voice note, place a call, find other alternative medium to communicate how you feel. And I, like we said before, your forgiveness does not depend on the response of the offender. So if in trying to communicate how you feel, you're already planning that if he now apologizes, then I have forgiven. You may be setting yourself up for a trap. So you must, as you plan to communicate how you feel, in your mind, what you should say is, I just need to get it off my chest. I don't need the person's reply. Your goal should be to get it off your chest. So you're not acting in isolation. You're not acting in, in anonymity. You're not acting without the person's knowledge. You're letting the person know that, oh, Benny, Mr. or Mrs., I don't like what you did. And I just needed to let you know. Simple. Not, I don't like what you did. I'm telling you, and I deserve an apology. Once you deserve an apology, it's a trap. Because your apology may never come. What if the person also feels, I also deserve an apology because you did this, so I did this. So don't go with the intention and with the expectation that an apology must come. Express how you feel. Say it off your chest because you want to get it off your chest and let it go. If the person apologizes, that's the icing on the cake. It's a beautiful ending. If the person does not even understand what you're talking about, just say, well, I just thought I should let you know. And I, I, I wish you well. And move on. It's a hard thing, I'm telling you. It's not easy. These things I've said today, it's easier said than done. But guess what? That is why it is what, that's why I said build capacity. It's a capacity building thing. Because once you can build capacity to treat people and speak how you feel and let it go, even if they don't respond, who becomes the better person? You. You become bigger. You become more resourceful. You become more dangerous. You become more lethal. You become more effective. You become more efficient. You become better at you. It is you who wins. So, thank you for watching Diary of a Coach today. Let us learn to forgive. Let us learn to forgive. I'd like you to please remember, this Saturday, I want to meet with you. 5 p.m., the Human Response Code. How do I lead my life how I want? Join me this Saturday. Call us or reach me right now and let's talk about it. So thank you so much for being on Diary today. It's been a beautiful episode, fantastic episode. I don't know, I just need to say this. Please, if you are someone who keeps malice, go and If you are someone who keeps malice, please go and get help. Learn to let go. Malice would hurt you. Malice is why you are having terrible, terrible experiences. Malice does not work. Stop keeping malice. Stop keeping malice. Stop keeping malice. Stop keeping malice. May God help you. Thank you so much and have a beautiful Thursday. Bye.